Christopher McQuail, Christy, was a young man of 17 years from Drogheda, Ireland, when he enlisted in the British Army Medical Corps to help fight the war to end all wars, World War I. And in January of 1916, having just been retreated from the horrors of Suvla Bay on the Gallipoli Peninsula, he sat down with the light of a candle and wrote a letter to his mother in Ireland. Christy McQuail was my great uncle. And although I make my home now here in Canada, my family has treasured every word of this letter for over a hundred years. When I was a young man, I carried me pack And I lived the free life of a rover from the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback While I waltzed my Matilda all over Then in 1915 my country said Son, it's time to stop rambling There's work to be done So they gave me a tin hat And they gave me a gun and they marched me away to the war And the band played waltzing Matilda As the ship pulled away from the quay And amidst all the cheers Flag waving and tears We sailed off for Gallipoli 31st Field Ambulance, Royal Army Medical Corps, 30th Infantry Brigade, 10th Division, Medical Expeditionary Force, 29 January 1916. Dear Mother, I received your letter of December 31st and papers of 8th January and was delighted to hear all were so well at home. I'm in the best of form here myself now. Everything is very quiet here, and at present we're having an easy time far away from Turk, Bulgar or German. There are just a few of us now in the small church in a fishing village by the side of a lake here in Macedonia. These are a funny people here. A mix, I think, of Greek, Bulgar and Turk. The Greeks here are in a majority and express such a hatred of the others that no one can imagine. There seems to be a long history between them all, with which I am not familiar. Everything here seems very primitive, just as it might have been at home hundreds of years ago, where the men wear trousers, the seat of which almost tip their heels, <laughs> and the women wear harem skirts. This is the third church we've taken shelter in since coming out of that hell that was Suvla Bay. Well, I remember that terrible day How our blood stained the sand and the water And how in that hell that they called Suvla Bay We were butchered like lambs at the slaughter Johnny Turk, he was ready, he primed himself well he rained us with bullets and he showered us with shell And in five minutes flat he'd blown us all to hell Nearly blew us back home to Australia And the band played waltzing Matilda As we stopped to bury our slain buried ours and the Turks buried there then we started all over again it was hard work trying to get the wounded away and the majority fell into enemy hands they literally blew us out of position by way of their ready artillery field and mountain guns we held our field hospital, well, 
actually more like a dressing station in the small Bulgar village of Kijala. Everything went quite well until the cold came. It became so cold, so suddenly, that men were f frozen to death where they lay, in the lightless, heatless trenches. It took us all of our time to get the frostbitten cases away with the whole ambulance at work. It was indeed a pitiful sight to see the men in the trenches, trying to keep warm with their blankets and overcoats, frozen stiff as boards and covered with snow. We were all so badly equipped for the cold weather, having little else than we had leaving the peninsula where the weather was tropical. On December 6th, the Bulgars began to pound our lines fiercely. They kept at it all day. Our artillery giving but a very poor response, for we had few guns. And the next day they attacked with great numbers. Our few men could not hold them back and retired, some sticking it out to save others. We were expecting a retirement, but none as quickly as it came. We had just finished dinner and were preparing to fetch the wounded men whom we had in the dressing station down to the next station when the shells started hopping all over the place. On the hill behind the village, the Bulgar shells were simply lifting trench and man into the air. You bet we cleared out quick from that place. Although they shelled the road ahead of us the whole way down. Our men made a stand again, thankfully, and, and held up the Bulgars while we carried the wounded that night about 10 miles away. Those who were living just tried to survive In that mad world of blood, death and fire And for 10 weary weeks I kept myself alive while around me the corpses piled higher Then a big turkey shell knocked me arse overhead And when I awoke in me hospital bed And saw what it had done, sure I wished I was dead Never knew there were worse things than dying Sing Matilda All around the green bush Far and free To hunt and to pace A man needs both legs No more waltzing Matilda for me We made our way towards Dorian On the quick Greek frontier our men, now helped by reinforcements, and the French fighting a fierce vanguard action with the enemy. The French are fine troops, and the Bulgars say they fight better than ours. From Dorian, we entrained for Salonika, a broken and weary lot of fellows, I can tell you. Once again, your humbled had escaped from a tight corner, and, well, I thank God for it. Again. They collected the wounded, the crippled, the maimed And they sent us back home to Australia The armless, the legless, the blind, the insane Those proud wounded heroes of Suva And when our ship pulled into Circular Key I looked at the place where me legs used to be And thanked Christ there was no one there waiting for me To grieve and to mourn and to pity But the band played waltzing Matilda As they carried us down the gangway Nobody cheered They just stood there and stared Then they turned all their faces away 
I suppose you have already seen Sir William Hamilton's dispatch on the Suvla Bay landing and can judge for yourself what an utter fiasco it was. So many lives thrown away for nothing. No one can imagine who had not been there. He does not give much credit to our division, although we had some of the fiercest fighting to do for day and night without food and water. Many died there from thirst, and the heat was unbearable. He mentions the stretcher bearers in his dispatch and gives us great praise. We had some narrow shaves there while collecting the wounded, and we lost a good deal. I think I have been there on every occasion when our men were knocked out and, and have always managed to escape. Of course, out there in no man's land, we were always in plain view of the enemy, who could have wiped us out completely had they wished to, but I must say they respected the Red Cross very well considering. Of course, when we mixed with the infantry, they could not discriminate between us, and it was a case of Sav Kipo. <laughs> Run for your life. On too many occasions I've been in a crowd where they shelled us, and although many fell around me left and right, for some strange reason I have always been spared. So now every April I sit on my porch and I watch the parade pass before me I see my old comrades how proudly they march Reliving their dreams and past glories I see the old men all tired, stiff and sore Those forgotten heroes from a forgotten war and the young people ask, what are they marching for? And I ask myself the same question. But the band played waltzing Matilda, and the old men still answer the call. But year after year, the numbers get fewer. Someday no one will march there at all It's over now. Suvla Bay is now evacuated. And the Turks are there once again. Well, I suppose it only proves that men's plans don't always succeed, even when everything points to success. At any rate, we are all right now and having an easy time. And all of those things are just things of the past. Things are beginning to brighten up a little now. And if all goes well, the war should end this August and, and we'll be back home once again. I'm in the pink of condition, Ma, just now. And I've pulled up more than I've lost. I hope Tommy and May are quite well. Remember me to all my old friends at home. I will conclude now for the present, hoping my father and yourself are quite well. Your loving son, Christy. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, who come waltzing Matilda with me. And their ghost can be heard. As they march by the billabong Who'll come waltzing Matilda With me